let's see who's on the show this evening. We've got a great lineup of guests for you tonight. We really have. My first guest is the boy stroke man wizard himself. It's only Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. I love Daniel Radcliffe. I tried to adopt Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel, are they, they're really, let's just clear this up. There are really going to be no more Harry Potter films, are they? Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Not with me. Come on. Probably. Surely. <laughs> Come on. I, 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 don't, I, think, I think they're finished. I don't think she's writing anymore. You I, could... I'd ask her not to. Look, I... <laughs> I want to see more. You want to see more, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I've got an idea. I'll the... be getting a bit long in the tooth to be wearing a schoolboy's outfit no, in a couple here's, of years. <laughs> here's my brilliant plan. You saw the Inbetweeners movie. I did. Right? You, Ron, Hermione, Voldemort, head off to Lanzarote, go out on the lash. <laughs> it's a whole new thing. I can, yeah, Ron and Harry do Dallas. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Which wizard was Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thrilled he's here. I love uh, talking to Daniel. Okay, well, here we go. My next guest is quite simply the world's greatest naturalist. He's the bee's knees, he's the monkey's uncle, hen's teeth. It's Sir David Attenborough. Yeah. Sir David. Yeah. Sir David, let me ask you something before, before you come in. Is, is it true, I believe it's been claimed, not by you, but it's been claimed that you're the oldest man ever to go to the North Pole? Don't know. Oh. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, quite, it's a doddle going to the North Pole, I tell what? you. What? <laughs> it's a doddle. It's a doddle. You get on aeroplanes, you get on you know, helicopters, and then there you are. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I couldn't even make that noise, never mind go to the North Pole. <laughs> Could you do it one more time for me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sir David Attenborough, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> A hero of mine and I'm sure many of you as well. My next guest is a comedian, he's an actor, he's a writer, a painter, a poet. And, you know, when I first saw his comedy, I didn't quite get him at first. Uh, I'll admit that. Uh, and then I grew to love his work, and now, in my house, we consider him one of the most brilliant comedians in the country. It's Noel Fielding! <laughs> Noel Fielding, formerly of the Mighty Boosh, now of the Noel Fielding. <laughs> dot com. Dot org. Noel has a very distinctive look. You do have a very distinctive look, cos you're all in leather from head to toe today, aren't you? Yeah, I thought I'd come as the modern-day Knight Rider. You're completely <laughs> leather -fake. I love the way David's looking at it. He doesn't know whether to talk to you or take you home in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> he's, never see he's never seen one of that kind before. He's going, hmm. <laughs> watch closely and see how it breeds. <laughs> uh, that's Noel Fielding. He's on the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's a packed programme. And also here tonight, for your pleasure, we have some fantastic music, uh, incredible music. One of the best voices you're ever going to hear live. It's Seal. <laughs> Come on. It's Seal. Unbelievable voice that man's got. I haven't seen you for ages. I've known you for about 20 odd years, haven't I, Seal? Yeah, I think we first met at the Morgan. I think it was about 21 years 21 ago. 21 years ago. So I can say, we haven't seen you for a long time, so I can say officially, long time no Seal. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, terrible. What? Terrible. I've been working on that for weeks. It's the only reason I booked you. <laughs> that was great. It is isn't the only reason. He's great. It's Seal, ladies and gentlemen, to be singing live right over there. After. Great to see you again. Lovely to have you here. OK, let's get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen. Before we do, and, and you don't need reminding, but I want to see this, cos uh, what a series of movies and what a finale. Here he is as the magnificent and in the magnificent Harry Potter. Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. Do you watch the movies back? You must have seen them all, but do you oh, have I you ever had a Harry Potter afternoon and no, watched the movies? No, I, I see them. I see them at the at the premiere, and then if I can, I avoid ever watching them. You again. avoid them. 
Yes. Uh, when you hear the music, do you get excited? Do, 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 do. I, I get no. I, my heart dies a little bit every time I hear it as a ringtone. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't. Um, I think it would just be. It's you know, it's like passing around baby photos of yourself. You know, it's not really. It's not an enjoyable experience to. The last day of filming. The last day. You know, it's the last day. It's your last shot as uh, Harry Potter, and I guess you do it out of sequence. So it wouldn't have been the last scene we saw. But no. it must have been a, a very kind of it's a momentous day, quite an emotional day. I imagine. What do you guys do to, to either celebrate or to mourn the end of that? Did you give each other gifts? Did you go out and tie one on? What did um, you do? No, we, we had kind of a big night the night before, which was quite fun. Um, but on the last day, it was just really emotional. I didn't really expect to, uh, to get emotional, even though it was t kind of ten years of my life. But, I, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, I, I just I wept like a child as soon as we stopped filming. It, it was very, very strange to, to leave it behind. Because oh, you were 11 when you started. Yes, and 21 when I finished. Well, I couldn't do the maths. Um, and, uh... <laughs> Uh, did you give each other gifts? Did you say goodbye? Uh, no, and not really. <laughs> I don't think we did. I mean, yeah, I gave, I gave a, 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 like a gift out to all the crew and, um, and... I know that Rupert gave you something, though. Yeah. Rupert gave me a, a trumpet, which he had self-engraved. I don't play the trumpet. Okay. Um, and I, I don't have plans to, but, um, but Rupert gave... But if gave, you do, you're but, ready to if go. If I do, I've got one. And Rupert, <laughs> Rupert just... Rupert, because Rupert is just slightly mad, he, um, he, he has... He owns an engraving kit. Why, why wouldn't you? And, um, and so he, he engraves presents for, like, me and or just random musical instruments that he found. But that's a lovely thing, because it's, it's very great. personal and very strange and memorable. Yeah. What did he engrave on it? Could you tell us, or was it too personal? Oh, I, no, I think it was just abuse. That's all he writes when he writes cards to us. So and I don't think I can say it on television. Um, let me... Can, can I ask you about another... The other big popular series in recent years has been Twilight. Yes. And, of course, Robert Pattinson was in the Harry Potter movies. Yes. He was in the Triwizard Tournament. One, yeah, he was uh, Cedric. Uh, when he took that role, did he ask you your advice or did he speak to you about... Because he's just about to go into what's going to be a big life-changing franchise for him or did um, you not touch base? No, not at all. I mean, I, I literally... The first... I was, I was in uh, New York about to do Equus and I saw, was on the West Side Highway and I turned around and I saw this billboard and I was like... I know that guy. Cedric. Um, I, I'd never... I hadn't heard of the Twilight books at the time. I hadn't been aware of that phenomenon. And, um... So, yeah, no, but we... I really... Uh, we, it's odd. We have a very strange relationship now where we basically only communicate through journalists. We don't... Uh, we've never, we haven't seen each other in ages. So people ask say, you questions about each other. Yeah, and we say... Because everyone assumes that we're kind of great mates, but yeah. we, we, I, I haven't met him, but he's a lovely guy. When uh, I worked with him, he was... Harry lovely. Potter could easily destroy all those vampires, though, couldn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah, OK, so yes, that's... Not a question. <laughs> where in the world... What... You know, we're talking about the fans there, and I know the Twilight fans are mad for Twilight, and the Harry Potter fans are mad for Harry Potter, but where in the world are the fans the most kind of, um... Obsessive is the wrong word, but most full on. Japan, without a doubt, they love they love Potter over there. That I had my my true my truest kind of Beatlemania type experience once when I was over there. When I uh, I <laughs> I was walking through a school corridor, I was visiting a Japanese school for a like, publicity thing, and uh, I wasn't just hanging around. And I um, <laughs> and I uh, and, um, and I, I literally I, I brushed some uh, young girls, I was walking past her, and I said, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Boom! Just fainted. <laughs> just that I had brushed her and spoken to her was too much, and she fainted. And, you know, you've got to enjoy that stuff, because that doesn't last forever. <laughs> like, when you have a moment like that, you've kind of got to take in how cool and weird it is. Well, you know, I knew that the Japanese fans were very, very crazy for you, and we found this thing, I don't know when you did this exactly, but this is, um, they were, I think they were doing a TV show about Harry Potter, Harry Potter fans, and they had you come out and surprise someone. And I don't yes. think you've ever seen this, oh, actually, yes. no, I haven't seen it. And, I remember being there. Went out on Japanese TV. Have a look at this. <laughs> Gryffindor, I think. She was, she was, as you can tell, an incredibly sweet girl and just completely, like, overwhelmed by the fact that she was meeting me, which is very strange. Um, but she, when she met Rupert, she was obsessed with his eyelashes oh, yes. and his eyebrows and she kept wanting to touch them. I think we have, we have that clip. It's, so, it's, it's a very strange thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? <coughs> no. What did she expect it to smell? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the best part about that is, if you know Rupert, like he cannot cope with that kind of thing. <laughs> like he just, he is so struggling to keep it together in that moment and just and still be the polite, uh, nice person that he is and not just uh, laugh. It's a good one. It was, but uh, they, no, they are. I mean, they're like they're amazing fans. Well, as so a surprise blessing. for you, I have 35 Japanese fans. <laughs> we'll be bringing them out after the break. Don't go away. Go on out now, Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> we'll still be with us. <laughs> <laughs>